Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with an, a very quick little video of something that I made the other day. Um, I ordered two little plastic shells from Amazon and I think it came to about $14 or $15. They're held on to a cube that I have in my art room with six command strips on each one of them. So the deal was you got two shells for like 15 bucks and then it had the command strips. Um, that's all fine and dandy, but the problem is I would put books on there and they would flop to one side and I really was aggravated at the fact that I could not keep them upright. Each shelf says that it will bear up to eight pounds of weight. Well, I knew I wasn't going to have eight pounds, but still I wanted to put my mini books and journals on the little shelf. So my husband found some composite wood in the garage that I could use to make bookends. So I wanted to make mini bookends, which I could not find on Amazon, for my shelves. So I took the composite wood and I um, had him cut it down to what I needed. And then I primed them so that I could paint over them. All right, this notebook here, I mistakenly thought I had something in there. This is my ATC storage book. And um, I was looking through there for something very specific that I remember, but I couldn't remember if it was an ATC or an ICAD. So I'm thumbing through here, trying to figure out where the card is that I wanted to use as my example for my bookends. So I'm just thumbing through it right now looking. Can't find what I want because I can't remember where it is. <laughs> Okay, so now I get out the purple binder, which is the um, ICAD binder. And I'm looking through here for all the past years. I think I started doing ICAD around 2018, 2019. I didn't always finish every year, but I think two or three years I did do the whole 61 days. It, in the beginning, it's kind of painful. In the middle, it's wonderful at the end. You're like, oh, please, let's hurry up and make this over. So I'm just thumbing through there trying to find what I want to use. And then I find it. And then I can't get into it because I can't remember where the opening is. All right, so I don't remember what the prompt was for this one. But the whole piece is a bookshelf with little miniature books on there and each one has a year on it and I think the earliest year I saw in there was 1969 I have no idea why I started 1969 so everyone that has a plain spine on it I put a year on it I have no idea why I started that year because I wasn't born then I mean I wasn't born that year Oh, I was born then. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out why I started with 1969, but nevertheless, this is what I wanted to do. Yeah, it says 2019. Oh, yearbook is what it, the prompt for the, I guess, number eight. All right, so what I want to do is I want to replicate books on a shelf onto each one of these little things. All right, that's the bottom portion of the bookend where the books sit on top of it to hold it upright. And I am going to glue that to the larger portion that's already got gesso on it. So I'm trying to decide, did I want to do them tall or short? And so I'm just playing around with them. The, the wood that I'm using is some kind of composite wood. It's not balsa wood and it's not press board, but it's some kind of composite wood. So I have two bookends for each one of the little plastic shelves, which are white. All right, why am I still looking at this? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just yammering away about the little books. I can't decide if they were done in acrylic or watercolor, but I determined after looking at the gradation for the um, some of the paints, they are little watercolored books. 
and I'm pointing out that's where I discovered, yes, they are watercolor, which I am not doing on the gessoed pieces. It's going to have to be acrylic because I just didn't think watercolor was going to look good on those gessoed pieces. So it will be done with acrylic paint. All right, I bought a set of acrylic paints. I will put the uh, link down below. I can't remember the brand name of these things, and, and it's too blurry on here. I can't see it, but I was trying to show the colors I was going to use. I was using um, a red, a yellow, a blue, and a green, just basic stuff. The green turned out to be too pale. So I'm trying to figure out how to make the lines here. Did I want to make them thick? big fat books or do I want to make them little skinny books All right there is I'm just putting out little blobs of paint to paint I didn't realize those gonna be more than what I put out there because that stuff really soaked up I did take a ruler and draw lines on the wood and then after I did it I thought well you know it's gonna leave pencil marks on that I'm really not sure I want pencil marks I only did it on one of the boards. Then I realized it was going to be kind of a pain to paint them to get the line straight because honestly, I just can't paint straight. I tried. I used an angle brush thinking that was going to help. A no. <laughs> Listen, even though you got a great tool, if you don't know what you're doing, you still have just a great tool. <laughs> Look at that. That's pitiful. Pitiful. After a while, I gave up on the line thing and just started painting. Then I thought, okay, let me take a piece of paper and I can just paint over it to get a straight line. No, it bleeds underneath the paper. Okay, so now we're trying painter's tape. That was a little bit better. Actually, it was a lot better. But then I didn't let it dry. I'm like, oh, how am I going to keep painting? I don't want to wait every, between every single stripe for it to dry. So I went and did all four one at a time. I'm impatient. Y'all don't know that about me, right? <laughs> Some things I have a lot of patience for. I knit. you got to have patience. But this, not so much. So I, then I put the tape on top of things. And yes, there's white lines in between, which I did try to fix later on. Because evidently I can't even tape straight. <laughs> the yellow was too opaque. It needed more than one coat. I didn't like the green that came out of the tube. It was too light, so I added brown to it to deepen the, the shade of green. It did improve the green, but it still was not a primary green, which just turned out fine. After I knew what I was going to do to the wood, I was like, eh, I don't really care. There we go, typing, type, uh, taping, taping, trying to tape and redo and add more layers because it was too light. There, they're, um, they're all finished. Oh, yeah. Then I thought, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a brown wash over them. So I put brown paint in there. I mixed water with it. I'm like, nope, too thick. Then I took some of the thick and put it in the second daisy wheel part and added more water. So I gave each one of the little things um, kind of a brown wash. I did try to rub it off with a paper towel to see if it would no <laughs> forget it so then I dried it uh oh and then I took the acrylic nail file and a regular nail file to give it kind of that look old worn you know that kind of ugly look what do we call that vintage <laughs> So I just scraped some of the paint off. Make the books of gold. 
That was the last piece. I had problems with the fourth piece, so now I am finishing up the fourth piece. And I did use the heat gun to dry these. Not um, the heat gun bubbles acrylic paint, but I kept it up high enough that it didn't mess with it. All right, so now I'm trying to correct my lines. Now I'm going to do the black Posca marker because honestly, painting with black paint and a straight line, eh, not happening. So I just took the ruler and went in between the colors with the black Posca. It wasn't hard. Wasn't, it wasn't hard. Now I'm filing it again, kind of give it that old look again. I do love my Posca markers. Now I'm putting the little, I don't know what do you call them. Anybody who makes books knows what they're called. But anyway, I know how to do it. I just don't know what it's called. The little humps in the book and the spine gives a little more interest. So I try to make each one a little bit different. I tried um, Posca markers. I tried uh, gold and silver markers. And my gold markers are dried up. I need to toss those in the garbage. I found a different gold. Uh, uh, is it an elegant writer or some kind of pen like that? And as I used for the gold. But went right back to Posca's because Posca's have to say wrote the best on the wood with the acrylic paint on it. So now I'm just coloring and piddling around with it. It was fun. When I edited the video and I started compiling all the clips, it was one hour and 15 minutes. It did take about a half a day because I waited for some stuff to dry in between while I thought about what I was going to do to it. Because I kept changing my mind. So what I usually do is I start a project and realize that that was a mistake. I go sit in the recliner and knit for a couple hours. Then I go back and go, okay, that was dumb. So let's redo this. <laughs> and that's why it takes me half a day to do this. And an hour and 15 minutes to record. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed doing that. I didn't really plan ahead too well, which is normal for me. There they all are. And I wrote things on the spines of the books that pertain to art. I just thought it was funny. I put my initials on one of the books. What can I say? All right, so now, okay, so this is a mixture of 50% water and 50% of polyacrylic, Minwax min Polyacrylic Sealer. I learned that trick from Shannon Green many years ago. So when you buy a can, you can stretch it out by doing a 50-50 mix. There's 50% water, 50% of Minwax, the polyacrylic. I wanted to put a sealer over them because they are acrylic. And as I'm, <laughs> as I'm brushing this stuff on them, I realize that I am brushing a wet liquid on top of acrylic paint, which is water activated. All right, I'm using E6000. I, my husband said he didn't think he had any screws that were small enough to screw these little thin boards together. So I took E6000, set them up there, and I did wait for four or five hours for that to dry. Although 24 is better. Not going to lie. And they stood up really well. Super easy. Super, super easy. They'll probably come unglued in, you know, three or four days. <laughs> Got to try. If you don't try, you're never going to know. So they sat there for four or five hours. All right, there's the empty plastic shelves. These are just photos that I took. And they're held on with the command strips. And this is the way I stacked the books on the shelf because they kept falling over. 
And that's what made me want to do the little bookends. All right, here are the bookends. Holding up the little teeny three for a dollar notebooks from um, Dollar Tree. There's a lovely book I received as a gift. And there they are, all sitting upright with the little bookends. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Bye.